Right, if you'd all like to gather around, let's, let's give a big warm welcome to Bishop Stephen. Thank you. The main man himself. And for the first question, I'm going to hand over to Amy. Oh, yeah. Have we got the first question? Can we have a question? I don't know the questions. Have we got a question? Oh, hey, Bish. I'm guessing that means Bishop. You're looking for... Oh, wow. I don't really want to read that. Um, you're looking fit and younger. What you been doing this year? That's very sweet of you to say so, Amy. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks. Um, I got told I had to slim down last year uh, by a number of different reasons. So I've been doing my best, doing something called the 2 5 diet and joined a new gym. So it's been good. Good job. I was, I was wondering, what phone do you have and does it work electronologically? Uh, I have an iPhone. I don't know what version it is. It does, it does work, but I've no idea how it works. So, but I expect it is electronologically, yes. Do you, have, you hashtag, have you put a selfie up for Instagram? Uh, no, I don't, don't yet do, do Instagram. Yet. If somebody wants to show me how to do Instagram later, I'll have a go. When you say love our neighbour, is that talking about humans or does it include animals and the whole world? Uh, I think uh, it. I think when Jesus is talking in that passage, you go and have a look for yourself. It's in Luke chapter ten because uh, I think he's talking about human beings, because he then tells the story of the good Samaritan. But there are other parts of the Bible which do tell us to love and care for the whole of creation and the whole world and animals as well. So I wouldn't want to exclude that, but I think in that place, because of the Good Samaritan story, it is talking mainly about people. Okay, what is your favorite part of your job and why? Uh, it's coming to breathe deep every year, it's fantastic. And uh, uh, I think I think one of the things uh, the whole church has got to do much better is engage much more with your generation. I think people of your generation, not necessarily you, because many of you will be part of the church, but your generation as a whole is the first generation to grow up for hundreds and hundreds of years in this country without knowing the Christian story or the Christian faith. And I think the church has got to tell that story loud and clear to your generation. If you could have three wishes, what would they be? Oh, golly. Um, I don't really wish very much, actually. Uh, I pray a lot, but I don't wish. And uh, uh, my prayers uh, uh, for uh, the world, Christians always are st uh, to pray for peace and justice and kindness in the world. Uh, uh, Pray for the church that we be better at doing the stuff that we need to be doing, loving and caring for people. And my family are hugely important to me, so I always pray for them. Good job. Uh, what's your favourite biblical character other than Jesus? Oh, that's hard. I love the Old Testament, so it will be somebody from the Old Testament. And the person I'm... Uh, digging into at the moment in my own uh, Bible reading and study is Samuel. And I love Samuel because Samuel has a friendship with God which lasts from the beginning of his life, when he's about seven, when he first hears God speak to him, right to the end of his life, when life keeps changing and God keeps asking him to do new things. So I think it will be Samuel. When did you become a Christian? Well, uh, I became a Christian uh, when I was about 15 years old and uh, I've been sent along to church by my mum and dad when I was uh, four or five and held within the church. But it was when I was about 15, I went away with a youth group like this, a very small one, just three or four people from church. And I first understood on that weekend that being a Christian wasn't just about believing in God, it was about having a friendship with Jesus and it was about offering your whole life back to God. And that's what I did when I was 15 
and asking Jesus to come into my life and my life changed dramatically at that point. Brilliant. Uh, if you were a cake, what would it be? I would be a fruit cake. What? <laughs> Absolutely, a fruit cake. T tell uh, us why. Uh, I think because I'm a, I'm a, well, I'm a bit, uh, yes, eccentric. Somebody, people might want to answer that question in different ways. Full of uh, lots and lots of different things, I think. Oh, it's a long one. Ah. If life is an infinitely long piece of string, with our life on earth being a tiny red part at one end of the string, and the rest being our life in heaven, why are so many people so obsessed with the red part? Well, a really interesting question, and a uh, uh, big shout out to whoever sent that one in. It's, it's really good. Why, why are we concerned with this part of our lives? Well, uh, lots of reasons, really. Um, uh, because it's where we are now, and it matters. It really matters. Uh, uh, because uh, Jesus tells us we should be, it really matters how we live our life now, because we're being shaped now and prepared for what will come uh, later, uh, and because this is where we experience life and love. You have to live life. One of the gifts of life is you have to live life in the present, but in the perspective of eternity and the future, and that's the difference being a Christian makes. But you should always live it in the present, and so what you do today really matters. Okay, this is something my mum taught me recently. What is faith? Why does God not reveal himself to all? It's one of the great, that's also a really good question. One of the great interesting things about uh, belief in God is that God puts himself in a place with us where we have to trust in him we don't fully know through our senses uh, about him and the way of life he offers to us. He asks us to trust. It's a little bit like a, a child learning to walk. My grandson Josiah, he's one in a few weeks' time, and he's just learned to walk on his own. And he learned to walk on his own uh, by stepping out and not knowing whether he was going to balance or not. And God is like that with us. He invites us to come to him and just step out. And by doing that, we become more and more confident in his love and grace. Uh, and that's the way God designed it. So that that part of us which trusts gets stronger and stronger the longer we walk with God. How are you enjoying Facebook? Thank you. I, I've, I've just gone on to Facebook and I have a public profile, so if you uh, uh, go on and look for Bishop Stephen Croft public profile or Bishop of Sheffield public profile, uh, you, will, uh, you will find me. And I'm, I like new things um, normally, but I'm really struggling to get my head around the whole Facebook thing. So if anybody can, can kind of explain it to me, that will be really interesting. And I'm trying also to find acceptable ways of saying to people, I'm now on Facebook, you can go to my page and like me, because that sounds a bit creepy to me. So, so, so I'm trying to find language that will help me say that. So I'm enjoying it a little bit, and I'm a bit nervous about it as well, uh, but uh, it's an interesting experiment. What is the church's response to man-made global warming? Thank you. Uh, it's, uh, the church's response is, it's one of the uh, greatest issues of our time. We absolutely have to be clear in our message to the world that uh, we need to look after this earth that God has given us. The church is convinced officially that man-made global warming is happening and that it's extremely serious and that it affects the poorest people on earth. And therefore, Christians have been taking a lead over the last year in all the action and campaigning leading up to uh, the Paris talks and are taking a lead in the follow through uh, from that. It's really serious. We need to make our voice heard. Has your bay changed since last year? Oh, my bay. Okay. I can't, it stands, stands for something, doesn't it? 
Best, yeah. best above all, uh, best uh, before anything else. Yeah. Okay. No, it hasn't. I think last year, I, I hope I said God. <laughs> no, you said your wife. Oh, my wife. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, God above everything, and then my wife and my family. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What is your favourite story in the Bible and your favourite miracle? Thank you. My favourite story in the Bible. <clears throat> it's a story about Jesus on Easter Day and uh, uh, the story where Jesus uh, appears to two disciples uh, on a long walk to a place called Emmaus and they don't recognize him and he listens to them and asks them questions. He talks to them from the scriptures and then he is revealed to them in the breaking of the bread. That is absolutely my favorite Bible story. And my favorite miracle, which I think is wonderful, is the story of Jesus changing water into wine at Cana in Galilee from John's Gospel. The Emmaus story is at the end of Luke's Gospel uh, because it combines so profoundly the joy of life uh, with the suffering and sadness in life. And, uh, and it's a great mystery, but one of the secrets to living well with God is holding together suffering and pain and difficulty on the one hand which is there in the wine uh, picture and great joy and celebration on the other and keeping those in one life which jesus did how many bishops does it take to change a light bulb hundreds and hundreds because we're not very practical people so, uh, yeah, so yeah and why did you become a bishop well, uh, I don't know. You'd have to ask other people that to, to ask me to do it. Yeah, uh, not to change light bulbs. Uh, I know why I um, became ordained, and that's because I felt God was calling me to do that. And I think when I uh, offered my life to God back when I was 15, if you offer your life to God, you say, God, here am I, send me. And you try and listen to what God wants you to do with your life. It becomes a different question, not a what kind of career do I want to have, but God, how can I best serve you? One of the questions some of you were thinking about with Paul a few minutes ago. And so I offered my life, and what I heard back was, Stephen, I want you to be ordained and a minister. So I, di I did that. Didn't have any idea at that point that that part of my ministry would also be being a bishop. Uh, and it's not something you, as it were, choose to do. The church says to you, we'd like you to think about doing this, and so I did it. KFC or McDonald's? McDonald's. <laughs> I agree. What or who created the world? God created the world with purpose and design and beauty and order. And how can anybody really believe that this beautiful world we inhabit, which has such meaning and depth and love and life, has happened by chance or simply through physics. That is a so unbelievable uh, uh, question. This whole world is full of evidence of design and beauty and meaning, and that's because God made it. Brilliant. What is your favourite musician, favourite pop song, and or favourite rapper? Okay, well, I'm listening on my... Um, I listen to music a lot, and at the moment I'm listening to a couple of uh, bands. Uh, David Bowie I'm listening to and the Eagles, because they were both uh, from my youth, I remember. And David Bowie has died recently, and the lead guitarist and the Eagles has died recently. So they are forming my soundtrack at the moment. Favourite pop song I love, absolutely love the song that was uh, in the charts before Christmas. I wasn't expecting that. It's a beautiful love song. And I really uh, think it's fantastic. I don't have a favourite rapper, I'm afraid, except the Kit Kat rapper after I've eaten the Kit Kat. So. Why is the Bible so special? The Bible is a unique book, and through it, God speaks. God speaks through the written word of Scripture, and God speaks through the living word of Jesus, and that's what makes the Bible special. And when we come to read the Bible, we engage with what God wants to say to us in all time and particularly in our day. Well, that's all we have time for. There is, oh. there is another one, but we, we don't have enough time. We've run out of time. So we can all have a big round of applause for Bishop Stephen. Thank you very much. Yeah.
Let's go.